Okay, in this last video here, we will talk about a really important application of phylogeography and the application specifically is how it can help inform us about biological invasions. So invasive species are non-native species. They can be considered sometimes called alien species. They're species that don't belong. They're somewhere that's in their non-native range. Often that is due to some kind of movement from human activity. So there are a lot of invasive species nowadays because of us. And why does this matter? Uh, matters for a couple reasons. They've done some studies that indicate about 50% of extinctions where we can have a cause for extinctions are actually attributed to invasive species. So invasive species cause half of the species extinctions that we have documented, which is huge. And in addition to the biological, ecological ramifications, invasive species are hugely expensive. So just in the U.S. alone, it's estimated that we spend about $120 billion every year on trying to prevent and control invasive species. So this is a huge issue. What I'm showing here in the picture are some California invasive species. So this right here is the quagga mussel. This is a bullfrog. So these are all some invasive species that are relevant to us here in California. And where phylogeography comes in is that phylogeography can help us identify where that invasive species actually came from, what its geographic region of origin is. And that's important because if we know where that invasive species came from, we can make more informed decisions about whether we should be monitoring the borders, and if so, borders from where, whether we should be monitoring the pet trade, that's often another common source of invasive species. So really, phylogeography can help give us more information about where to target our efforts to hopefully prevent these invasive species to continue coming in from these non native areas. This is one example that they've used phylogeography for this type of application. So on the left here is a picture of a bat with white nose syndrome or white nose disease. You can see here that poor little guy. Bats are having a very tough go of it recently. But what they have done is try and figure out where the fungal pathogen that causes white nose syndrome came from. So on the right here, this is from a paper, Dries et al. 2017. What they did is identify roughly 23,000 SNPs in the fungal pathogen that causes white nose syndrome. They sequenced those SNPs from both the pathogens present in North American bats, so bats they collected from New York, and from different potential origin sites. So they also sequence the fungus from different sites in Europe and different sites in Asia. And so they constructed a tree based on what you know from about phylogenetic trees from our previous video where do you think this fungal pathogen that's hurting bats here in North America, where do you think it came from? Europe or Asia? So if you remember, when we look at these types of trees, branches that are close together to each other indicate genetic similarity. So if we look at this tree here on the right, the fungal pathogen that was collected from New York here in the US is very genetically similar to isolates that were collected from Ukraine, France, basically from this European branch. And it's pretty genetically distant from fungal isolates that were sequenced from Asia. So what this is telling us is that we, overall, this fungal pathogen that's causing white nose syndrome in our North American bats came from Europe, not Asia. So we can then use that information to try and figure out how to prevent either more fungal pathogens from coming in from those areas or 
from either these same pathogens or new ones. So it seems like from Europe was the route of entry. We can try to prevent that in the future. And if we bring this back to the very beginning of the module when I brought up the Asian giant hornets, knowing what you know now, we should be able to answer this question. So how can we figure out where Asian giant hornets came from using the phylogeography and the tree skills that you've just learned in this module? Go ahead and pause the video. You can think about for a little while, how would you answer this question? All right, so first of all, what we would wanna do is get a DNA sample from both the invasive individuals and also the potential source populations. So in this case, for the Asian giant hornet, like I mentioned earlier, they found some individuals in Washington and some individuals in Canada. So you would wanna sample those guys. Those are the invasive ones here in the US. You would also want to get a DNA sample from potential source population. So this is an Asian giant hornet, for instance. So you would want to get samples from different populations in Asia. Once you have that DNA sequence, what you would want to do is construct a tree. And in terms of what specifically to look at in that DNA, if you think about to some of the other videos we had in this module, generally SNPs are going to be the most informative type of marker for you if you have the time and the money. Okay, so you get your DNA samples, you can pull out some type of marker like SNPs. What you then want to do is build a tree from that molecular data. And then when you're looking at that tree, what you want to do is ID the nearest neighbor to your invasive species. Just like we did with that bad example, the nearest neighbor on the tree is likely the origin source for the invasive sample that you have. And I have a story uh, linked here on the bottom. I'll post it on our discussion board as well. But there, there's an interesting article in Wired, which is another news source I recommend. They have really good science stories. They have preliminary evidence, as stated in this article, that there have actually been two separate introductions of these Asian giant hornets. So this is an excerpt from that article, and what it says is that, genetically speaking, the sample of the Asian giant hornet from Washington was close to a subspecies in South Korea but the one in Canada was a near 100% match to those found in Japan. So it looks like those two different populations of Asian giant hornets that were found in Washington and Canada actually came from two different sources. So again, that's useful for us to know where they came from to hopefully prevent more individuals from coming in. And this article also states that they're actually have sequenced, I think it's U, who was it, USGA, I think. They've actually sequenced the entire genome of the Asian giant hornet. So there's a lot more genetic information available now to use as a reference. So when we have, if we have future issues with this species, we'll have genetic information available to help us more readily identify where those invasives may have come from.